Big Tractor Power is here at the 2019 National Farm Machinery Show in Louisville, Kentucky, looking at the Agco exhibit with uh, Stuart Maxwell, who is a field specialist for Agco. We're going to look at these new 8700 S-Series tractors for 2019. What can you tell us about the new S-Series? Well, it's an exciting series at Massey Ferguson, and thank you uh, Big Tractor Power for uh, stopping by today. Uh, the S-Series, of course, we introduced a soft introduction uh, last year uh, in North America, and we really didn't have much product to show uh, at, at, at National Farm Machine Show last year. There was one, but it was very brief in that. But the big changes on this exciting product is the fact that we've got some new graphics on the tractor, which are exciting. Yes, it's a change, but new lighting package, a little different hood design up front, as well as some exciting features inside the operator station, such as the larger touch, touch display screen for the implement and tractor. So there's definitely a lot of new technology up in the cab, and we'll take a look at that. Um, let's talk just a little bit about the tractor. Uh, how do we know what the horsepower is? Well, how does that numbering system work for it? Well, I'm glad you asked that because on the Massey Ferguson uh, branded tractors, and we're trying to migrate this to a lot of the tractors, the last two digits will be our engine horsepower. And that might vary a little bit in comparison to some competitor tractors out there. Uh, because of the five different nationally, or not nationally, but globally recognized uh, power ratings. But ours is basically a power rating with the engine in the tractor running. So that's basic engine, so it's 370, in this case 83, uh, or 87, 8737 is basically 370 engine horsepower. Now naturally, the best way to measure the horsepower is what we do at the PTO, because it's measurable directly. What kind of engine uh, powers this tractor? Well, the, all of our Echo uh, produced tractors, uh, the Massey Ferguson tractors, and for the most part, a great many of the Challenger branded tractors have our own Echo power engine. Uh, a world-class engine made uh, four different plants around the world, but the main production facility is Linovore, Finland. Uh, it's an exceptionally efficient engine. Uh, customers have come to know on that this is a world leader in not only a fuel efficient engine, but longevity. And I see this has a Dyna VT decal on it up here under Massey Ferguson. That's your CVT transmission? Yes, it is the FENT continuously variable transmission. Uh, we, we name it the Dyna VT on the mass inversion tractors. So it is a two range transmission from zero to 34 mile an hour if you have front yeah. suspension. And that's, that's standard on all the 8700 series? That's standard on all 77 and 8700 series tractors, yes. Well, and then we have this, I'm gonna zoom in here, we've got the new decal 8737S. And when we climb up in the cab, we're going to see that S stands for seat. We've got a new impressive seat for comfort and functionality, and also for software. There's a lot of technology that we're going to see this tractor oh, can do. S, S, even though it doesn't match, but it really stands for a premium, premium uh, uh, brand is what it is, premium products. Uh, it, it's special more than anything because of the enhancements we've done over the years to the 8600 series, which now evolved into the 8700 series, and a lot of changes that the customers wanted to see done. We've, we've listened to our customers and we've made those changes. Come out and see this product, it's exciting. Well, let's go see what makes it special in the cab. Thanks. All right, thank you. We're gonna climb up in the cab here with Maxwell and take a look at the new technology in the 8737S. So we talked about um, one of the features is this new um, this new leather seat, and we can see it's fully adjustable and moving up. Lots of ride, lots of comfort in it. Of course, uh, for those long 12, 14, 18 hour days that you spend on the tractor, you're going to appreciate a very nice, comfortable seat in it. You also can see um, different creature comforts that we have in the tractors, joystick controls, uh, a little bit of an improvement on some of the joystick control controls where we have a forward reverse shuttle system built right into it, a one-touch system. 
we also have fingertip as well as joystick hydraulic controls. A nice newer, brighter dash display. So basically the readouts pop more at the customer. A little bit easier to distinguish. You can see your cruise settings, what your ground speeds are, your target speeds, whether you've got engine management or any cruise speed set, as well as, as your current ground speed. So I can really see that, you know, just usually sitting over here in the buddy seat filming tractors. During, you know, three o'clock in the afternoon, you get the sun glare, or at night it gets dark, and this right. really jumps out at you, which is very handy. And it automatically changes with brightness of the, of the sunlight coming in. The, also in, in the environment that we don't see is a, a improved air conditioning system, not to say that the older system wasn't any good. The newer system, um, they've changed some of the functioning of the uh, air control pathways or whatever in, inside the cab, so it has given us a lot better uh, cooling and management, let's say, of the air itself. Big thing on the S series, of course, is the new display terminal on the tractor. So we can go in and we can start hot keying around for different functions on the tractor very simply if we want to change any of the management of the unit. And it's all touch screen and we can adjust different settings at the touch of one hand, whether it be your engine functions, tractor, hydraulic, implement, lighting, all kinds of good things. Um, very intuitive, very user friendly. It's all simple icons to revert to re versus a maybe color or something like that. Oh, that's really impressive just with a touch of a finger, dial that up or down. Or exactly. Uh... And you can, the nice thing about it is you can even activate it while you're going through the field. Even though you've got a suspended front axle, a suspended cab, and a suspended seat, there is some movement in here, but of course the console moves with you and it's very easy to come in here and make an adjustment. Say I want to do something and make that adjustment, I can go in there and do that right now, whatever that adjustment might be. So, very convenient for... You know, that, that was something I hadn't really thought about is the technology. I was recently out in a sprayer running over frozen ground. Not a lot of give out there. And that seat was up and down. Right. But that's nice that your controls are ready to go. Yeah. And that's a lot to think about when you're engineering this. It is. And, and sometimes it's minor adjustments that you might have to tweak as you're working through the field or doing your operation. But it's easily accessible. And at the end of the day, what the value of this is, is it's going to enhance your productivity because in some cases we can finite some of the adjustments quicker, easier than what you might do back in the day with a manual setting and such. It's all about productivity at the end of the day. Well, I can see this machine offers that for sure. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. No, it's very good. One of the nice features is on our headland management features that we have in here as far as headland, we can go in and set up our headland functionality, is we can start putting in up to 24 different inputs and 24 outputs, turning on functions on the tractor or the implement to engage and disengage at the touch of one button. And of course, that button is conveniently located right here, or we also have it right here on the joystick, where one touch, and now it goes into its cycle. I can go in and edit this at any point in time, or delete or add functions to the headland. So if you're running, say, like a white corn planter, you got marker arms, raised lower, uh, maybe you're raising trash wheels, engaging them, you can input all that into it and it automatically does it for you? Yes, it does, yeah. So we just sit, sit here very conveniently. We can sit here with the tractor not running or with the tractor running and very easily input items into the unit. And we can go in there and make the changes to it. We can add different functions to it. Say I wanted to change that steering to this. I hit OK and now I've put steering in here or I can build onto my string or whatever. So I do an input and I do a headland or an output. And it's very easy and simple to do. 
uh, here at Massey Ferguson. We have been doing this for numerous years. Uh, a very simple, easy headland function for the operator to use. And the beautiful thing is, is that at any point in time, you can edit the system without having to repeat and do it all over again. Mm. And once the system is activated, I can actually go in with the unit shut off or with the unit running, and now I can activate the system and see how it goes through its sequence. I can start the tractor and run the hydraulics or run the engine, and it'll go through the sequence without moving. Of course, we're not going to have a ground speed moving because we haven't taken the shuttle out of park. But I can test all the functionality before I go to the field. I can also go into the system and now edit the time in between each function as it is turning on. So maybe I want between my A engine cruise speed and my steering system being activated, I can change this timing to a different timing interval. So I can customize it for that application. Now, having said this, we manually inputted all this into the system. I can turn around and drive the unit and have it done automatically. Monk. So it can kind of memorize. It can memorize what you do. I always suggest to people that let's do the manual version first because when you drive automatically, yes, you've gone through the motions and you did everything that you want to turn on and turn off, but if there is any delay in you activating a function, it's taking that time account into its system and, and setting that time uh, set right there. So you may have to go back in and edit. Let's learn how to do it manually, then the automatic version comes extremely easy. And with that automatic, so let's say you're running a high speed white planter, putting in corn, running eight miles out in the field, eight miles per hour, but when you're coming up to the headland, Maybe you slow down to three miles per hour and then two miles on the turn. It takes 11 seconds for the implement to raise. It memorizes all that. It does, yeah. Right here as an example on this, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight functions. And right now these are all set at half a second. So that's four seconds from the beginning to the end of the cycle. And there might be a function where I'm doing that I need to, I need to change change the timing of that function and I just have to basically go back to, to uh, turning this off here and I'll just back out here for a second come back in and I could say right here I need to change that time to maybe eight seconds as an example and now it's going to go half 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 a second wait a full eight seconds before it yeah. makes the next one. And you can customize and manage this however you want, depending on what you're doing, what job. I have never found any implement, any application, any job that I could not build a end of row or headland management string for hmm. that couldn't speed up and basically replicate your job in a timely fashion and really give more time for the customer to look at the job that he's doing versus looking for buttons and switches to activate. I just activate one switch. So. Oh, that's really amazing. And so, and again, does it memorize, can you put different, so right now this machine's hooked up to a Heston Big Baller. Yes. Can I program it for the corn planter and then have a separate program for the, the baller members? Absolutely. So I can I can I can have multiple jobs saved and like I say at the end of this when I shut the key off the job is saved. I can assign a name to it or a job to it or I can actually build this on an off program on a PC and import this in on a thumb drive as well. And on that thumb drive I could have thousands of implements and jobs saved. And now I bring that and import that job into the tractor. The tractor is now all set. So again, it's it's about productivity at the end of the day. And you might have some customers that will run the tractor manually. Some want to use more of the cruise features than the automatic features. Of course, they are always going to enhance more efficiency of the whole package. But again, it's ease of use. It 
use. It's very simple and easy to walk through and, and use at the end of the day. Well, it's uh, just looking at this tractor, great cab, great features, and we can see now why it has an S on the front. It is a whole S lot more beyond that decal. It is. S stands for Stewart. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> well, Maxwell, thanks for your time and seeing this tractor. All and, uh, right. Can't wait to see one out in the field. Thank you very much for your time. Take care.